Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20, everyone. We're at part five now of the Tyranny world. on the Horizon. Uh, last we left off, our heroes uh, left the city of Macedonia and, well, Mastodon, and traveled through the desolate land of Bane, who has corrupted the area. Uh, shortly after they left the gate, they encountered a bone claw in which did not get to take much action as he was constantly in a grasp of mud the entire time, uh, thanks to Arden, uh, in which Mork and a uh, Aegis wailed on him the entire time, eventually just killing the bone claw out right before he could make any movement whatsoever. They then continued on their journey until which uh, the entire group heard Shredder multiple times here and there. Shredder. Different voices and different tones. Come um, out to play. <laughs> come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, as the players and heroes approached the hill, they searched for an entrance and quickly they did find one and it turned out to be an illusion, revealing a tunnel. But quickly they were uh, sidetracked as the forest line uh, spoke Shredder once more. And this time, Aegis decided to go inspect, in which the rest of the party followed. Uh, upon arriving at the tree line, uh, they tried to set it on fire, which didn't work. Bork then heard voices of the soul book in his mind once again. And uh, Arden saw vines creeping through the trees. That had some serious flashbacks to the Feywild. <laughs> In which they decided it was best to turn tail and head back to the tunnel. So they did. Uh, Matthias uh, had his eyes vibrate violently as he was seeing sparks of magic everywhere. Uh, Bork tried to dispel it, but it quickly grew back. Uh, once they reached the hill, they went and entered it. Uh, um, Bork went first, uh, Aegis went second. Matthias went ahead of Arden, Arden being behind. And the second... Arden and Matthias went through the tunnel. Matthias was grasped by a vine and almost nearly pulled out, but Arden saved his life by holding on to him and pulling him back in, releasing the vine that came all the way from the tree line. They then went through the tunnel down the rope ladder leading into the cavern system. Uh, they approached a door, and upon opening that door, they went into a room with statues, many, many statues. Uh, those statues to which have been animated by magic, but remain still for the time being. Uh, Bork went first and made it through, let's say, the easiest. He slipped through no problem. Um, Aegis went next and went through easy for the most part. Right at the end, he barely squeezed through, but he made it. And then... Arden and Matthias. While Arden hold Matthias. Ma held Matthias in front of him, they made their first steps. Matthias tripped on a stone and bashed into one of the uh, statues, and they all began to animate and move in and hone in on Arden and Matthias' location, to which they moved quickly as far as they could. About getting past the halfway point, uh, they got surrounded too dense to be able to be seen, in which Arden then cast Tidal Wave which blew the statues all around them and 30 feet away. Some of them broke and crumbled and fell on the ground. Uh, when they all reached the door, they went through it. Um, Arden raised, uh, how high would you say that wall was? Uh, I don't know, uh, two, only about like five feet high. Only five feet high? Well, I mean, five feet is still like a person tall. Short person. Yeah, but I mean, it covers up the door. So the doors, the doors are typically feet. six to eight feet. Oh, I don't know, but I mean, five foot to the point where like they have to crawl over and they're made of stone. So. Okay, that makes a difference. Um, I thought it was enough, yeah. No, that's fine. Uh, so, as he raised that wall up five feet high, the statues began. You can see kind of tops of some of the statues as they're trying to break through and bang across the wall. Uh, and thus is where our adventure continues as the heroes are on the opposite sides of the door. Do we get the sense that the statues would be able to get through the door? Like, if there wasn't the stone wall? With the massive amount that there is, you think, yeah, with enough force that they could provide, they would break through that door. Okay. With ease. Good to know. Do we have any way to block that door off? Nope. 
I could use an arcane gate to put one portal at the door and one on the opposite side, but put the, they could put come it, through the opposite side and come here, so... Put put it in front of the door, and then right behind them, so there's a constant loop. Then you can just do it the other way. No, 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 like, here's, here's, we're on this side of the door, put it on, put the, mm. the gate on that side of the door, and then a little further to the other side of that door, so they're, they run through it, and they get transported to it, and then they have to run through it again, like, Or I could put one on the door, and then one on the ceiling, like, just behind the door. Put it up on the skylight. Skylight. Is it skylight in that dome? Oh, okay. It has to be at least 30 feet tall. And it's like all the way up, and the <laughs> statues probably wouldn't be able to get to it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I cast Arcane Gate. I put one portal on the door, and then one on the skylight. Okay, so if they go through the gate, they go up to the skylight. Alright. How long does that last? <laughs> uh, up to 10 minutes with concentration. Mm-hmm. Concentration, so you do have to stay concentrated on it. Okay. So does that mean you're just going to wait there till the wall crumbles? Uh, like we're not really in a rush right now. Might as well wait and make sure it works. Take care of whatever else is left behind. Sure. After that, enough them will get through 10 minutes of them streaming in like madmen. They'll fall from the sky, shatter. We should be fine. But it's better to be safe than yeah. sorry. Okay. Sounds good. Release your wonder. What? No. We're... I want to release it. Well, you guys can keep going and then I'll just hold the portal here. We're not leaving it alone. Well, once I cast it, then I'll just make sure I'm concentrating and come your way. Okay. I'll release Mold Earth then. We need to get that bracelet. True. Alright, as you release Mold Earth, the wall crumbles well, down. Just keep Mold Earth going and then once it eventually breaks down. Okay. Mold Earth stays up. <laughs> um, Mold Earth obviously goes up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> <laughs> so Arden, Aegis, and Matthias, you all continue on? Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't feel good about it, but I do go. Believe me, I. As you all journey forward uh, down the slant of the cavern top, uh, you go about 200 feet until it levels back out, and then you go about another 80 feet through until you reach a double door with a dragon's head on it, completely made of stone. Yeah, that brings fire. Head, Dragon's head is open in an aggressive stance as if it's about to breathe an element. Yeah, that thing breathes something. Although it's in the stone. It's not an actual dragon's head. It's carved in stone. That's a trap. Approach the door and see if I see anything out of place. Okay, uh, roll investigation. Okay. Uh, as you look around the door, nothing seems out of place, although the dragon's mouth is a hole. It leads further in the door. I'm going to stick with my fingers in the hole. Uh, as you do so, stick your sword nothing happens, because uh, your whole hand doesn't go in, it's just your finger, and it just barely enters through the mouth. Okay. Um, you feel kind of cold air, but nothing happens. I, I run, I lunge towards and I grab, uh, 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 Aegis, Aegis by shoulder, and I, I wrench him back, and mm-hmm. I say, what are you doing? Are you Hands stupid? Hands off me, Nave. <laughs> <laughs> are you a complete fool? Uh, I put hands off him. <laughs> Bye. Stay out of this, Matthias. Okay. You put your hand in there again, and I'll lose all respect for your intelligence. Sure. So let's put your hand in there instead. And I'll kind of grab yours. <laughs> and attempt to put it in. What? Oh. Uh, contesting strength checks. I have a... Uh, the moment the babysitter leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> this is violent. I rolled a you want 14. You roll that? Or is that 14? No, it's only minus 1. They're minus 15. That's, that's uh, 14. Plus 5 is 19. 19 and... Uh, he, grabbed, he effectively grabs your arm and he sticks it in the hole. Uh, but he grabs the arm with the rings. Ram's ring. Uh... He sticks it in, and you hear the stampeding noises in your head. Mm. And in doing so, uh, your fist begins to feel dense and strong again, and starts shaking violently uh, until the ring actually pulls your whole arm forward, and you punch straight into the the doorway, and it begins to crack. (laughs) And the crack starts expanding throughout the entirety of the double doors, 
until it freezes for a moment and you pull your hand out and the ram's ring is dented. I look back. If you ever touch me again, I'll kill you. If you ever try to get my hand cut off again, I'll kill you. What do you mean, hand cut off? You effectively know what the ram's ring does now. Uh, mechanically, what does it do? Just gotta pull it up. I don't have, I don't have it on file. I have it in book. Uh, magical items of one. Is this like from, you made this ring? Or? No, it's a thing. Oh, shit. It's an actual thing, yeah. Just let me, let me go to the rings. Let me look. Nice, nice. <laughs> rings, rings, rings. We'll get there eventually. Couple more. Don't remember exactly. As we keep pulling through. Ah, rings. Uh, not this one. Ring of the Ram. This ring has three charges. It regains 1d3 expended charges daily at dawn. While wearing the ring, you can use an action to expend 1 to 3 of its charges to attack one creature you can see within 60 feet of you. The ring produces a spectral ram's head. It makes it attack roll with a plus 7 bonus. On a hit, for each charge you spend, the target takes 2d10 force damage and is pushed 5 feet away from you. Alternatively, you can expend one of the three charges um, to take uh, as an action to try and break an object you see within 60 feet of you. Uh, this isn't being, that isn't being worn or carried. The ring makes a strength check with plus five bonus for each charge you spend. So I have two charges left? Two charges left. One of them was used on the door. Did the door break? It broke. Okay. Uh, as the cracking happens, there's a quick pause and then the door crumbles to the ground. I look at the ring. I look back at Aegis and I say, you're lucky that worked. I Who knows what that works. dragon would have done in my hand? You begin to see that the stones. You are think I didn't know what I was doing? Push that wall down. So the pieces of it are crumbling and falling. I get that you don't like me. Over it. Right. Once they start to get even close to the uh, door, I go through the door and then cast Arcane Gate. So one portal on the door and one on the sky. Okay, uh, the first two make it over and they start rushing you. You go to the other side of the door, casting Arcane Gate. And the first two that collide with it uh, just disappeared through it. And then you see in the distance, they just <sighs> fall and <clears throat> crumble. Rocks go flying everywhere. Awesome. And uh, one after the other, they keep doing that. Blasting through the gate, falling down, crumbling, breaking. Um, and it doesn't take long before they're all broken, damaged. And it's just a pile of rubble and dust uh, in the center of the room. And you hear it down the hallway... I will kill you! <laughs> and it echoes up towards you. Uh, so, if I'm keeping concentration on this, is it, can I like leave the area? You can leave to a certain degree. I'd say okay. anywhere past the spell's range is too much. Okay, uh, the spell's range is 500 feet. You're fine then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just uh, get closer to these guys. Continue on and tell them what happened and ask, what is that, what is that about? This psycho put my arm in an unknown magical object, knowing damn well I could have died. Yep, that's true. He did. He did. I leave what are you guys? talking about? We opened the door. <laughs> you didn't know that this, <laughs> ring, this was the ring of the ram. You didn't know what was going to happen. You wanted my arm to fall off. I know exactly why you put my arm in there. I leave you guys alone for two minutes, and you're already fighting. He hates me for no you reason. You assume that since I'm made of metal, I'm really dense. But really, all these cogs are turning and I'm always two steps ahead of you. You hate me for no reason. You're a stupid machine. Guys, guys. You can't control his emotions. We have a job to do. We need to save the town of Macedon. We need to get this race left. You can settle your, your differences later. Let's continue on. Exactly. Keep your heads on your shoulder. And I'll... Brush past and kind of shoving him out of the way. Walk through the door. <laughs> and as you walk through the door, you all see that it is an open cavernous room. There's veg in the center. There's a nice tree that's grown up. <laughs> Various other vegetation of like shrubs and such. Uh, and then surrounding it is a walkway of a stone path. Uh, surrounding it is nice cobblestone walls in a perfect circle. And then there's a nice domed uh, area with a skylight that beams down on a pedestal. In which you see the bracelet. It matches the description, scorched markings. 
at this point, Arden's quite pissed. Uh, and he's not really thinking. So, I'm going to walk right up there and just going to grab it. Uh, Bork Nork, the science orc, sees this and he says, Wait, wait. There's a good chance this could be trapped in the same way that all the statues came to light back there. So, what's on this pedestal? This pedestal is a bracelet. Uh, or a bracer, more or less. And it just has scorch marks on it. I'm going to pick up one of the fragments at the door and just kind of toss it. Alright, you hurl it at the pedestal and it hits the top and dinks off. Nothing happens. Nothing also happens. use Mage Hand just to like explore all the other stuff in this room, like touching stuff. Alright, with you begin casting your magical blue hand and it starts yeah. touching and feeling everything in the room. Nothing happens. Okay. Can I pick it up now? Let's use a mage hand to pick it up. We don't know what this could do. We don't know if it could corrupt us or anything like that. Fair enough. So I'll use mage hand to pick it up. Uh, your hand reaches out, grabs the bracer, lifts it up, and brings it, glides it back towards you. And I'll like open my backpack for it to toss it in. All right, and the bracer goes in the back. So you've now acquired the bracer. Do we see, see any other doors or anything in this room? Nope. Let's leave. Okay. Should we... Should I transport us back to the city? Let's teleport. The sooner we get out of here, the better. I don't want to mess around with those stone things. I don't want to mess with those vines. I sure as hell don't want to mess with this giant. Do we see any other treasure around here? Or is it just... Is it... No investigation. Yeah, I'd like to investigate. Sure. That is a three... It's an 18 uh, 23. plus 2, dirty 20. Or 24. 24. All right. Um, as you guys investigate and look through the vegetation, you kind of peel open the shrubberies and stuff. Um, Aegis, you got, what was it? Three. Three? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, uh, you got dirty 20. Dirty 20. And do you got 24? Yeah. Um, so, Bork, you're the first one to find it. Uh, you open up a shrubbery and there is a uh, medium-sized chest in there. Uh, it seems to actually be buried in the dirt, but the top is sticking out. I'll use Mage Hand to open it. And I'm sending back a few steps. To, to, to Alright, you take Mage Hand and you open up the chest yeah. and it opens and then some, like a gust, a small gust of wind kind of just... But it opens up. What's inside? And then I'll look inside. Look inside. Um, this is the part that I'm not sure what's going to happen. Oh, I don't really like when a DM says that. <laughs> Personally, the other, the other groups I ran this with, they never found this chest. Oh. So, they're like, oh yeah, we got the bracer. through. Let's leave. Yeah, yeah usually uh, when a DM is like, I don't want to do this, or yeah. Ooh, I don't know what's going to happen. Something bad is going yeah. down. Something bad is going down. You find in this chest is a set of condensed uh, steel armor that's very shiny, reflected. And on the bracers, there are like horns that almost come up the sides of it. And it has massive shoulder plates um, to which the bottom have spikes that come out. I'll take a few steps back and use Mage Hand again just so you touch around and you know, see if there's anything around. <laughs> You're so nervous. <laughs> so you take your Mage Hand and you touch around. Nothing happens. Uh, you also see in the chest is a pair of brass golden shackles. Never mind, yeah. I'll I'll take everything out of the chest. Okay. You can like use mace hand like go they like put it in a row. Okay, you pick one, I pick one, and you pick one. Yeah. Well, being that mage hand and like setting it off or or feel sorry with touch it. I I would like to investigate the shackles here. Yeah. Okay. So I don't care for armor as a sorcerer, so... Yeah, I, I wouldn't have the armor either. No, I, 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 I think... I armor. I think I... What? I can't wear armor. I oh. have my own integrated armor. <laughs> oh, though I feel like it's... We can give it to you, our friend... Matthias. Uh, Matthias, yeah. What kind of armor is it, though? Some... Or is there anything else in the chest? <laughs> There's still things in the chest. Oh, okay. Dope. Good for you us. You pull out a pair of shackles, you pull a set of armor, um, and then you pull out... Uh, basically what seems like a nice big uh, one-handed hammer that has face on one end and then a face on the other side mirroring it. Similar, it's a man with a, a beard. Uh, 
color is quite uh, silverish, and then the beard itself is light blue. There's gold ring on each side. Can I roll a history check on like all this stuff? Can I do an arcana check on the wall? Yes, yes. It's uh, 13. 13, you do that on the hammer? Or on all of it? Uh, on the hammer first. On the hammer first. Yeah, 25. 25 for your arcana. I know exactly what that is. Your history is. check was 13. 13. I, I know what you mean, but I never had. You read a story once about a brave Goliath who wield, well, he, he wielded a hammer, a one-handed hammer, along with a massive uh, magical shield. Uh, this hammer, each time he struck it, uh, ignited lightning bolts. Uh, to It uh, shocked with lightning bolts, and he threw it, whipped it at a target, and in doing so, uh, a loud boom was made that echoed okay. everywhere. Um, and impaled his target. I'll ask these guys if they want a mystical hammer infused with, that could be infused with electricity. You recognize the name is Hammer of Thunderbolts. I could use it. I'll also do a history check, see if I can that. I got 25 in my Arcana check on the shackles. I have no need for a hammer. You do on the shackles? Yeah. You have acquired a pair of dimensional shackles. Just see how these I can use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can use as an action to place these shackles on an incapacitated creature. These shackles adjust to fit the creature for, of small to large size. In addition to serving a mundane manacles, uh, the shackles prevent a creature bound by them from using any method of extra dimensional movement, including teleportation or travel to a different plane of existence. They don't prevent the creature from passing through an interdimensional portal. You and any creature you designate, uh, when you use the shackles, uh, you can use uh, an action to remove them. Uh, once every 30 days, the bound creature can, <laughs> can make a DC 30 strength athletics check. Uh, on success, the creature breaks free and destroys the shackles. That's every 30 days. I loop those around my belt. That come in handy. Okay. And then, there's the sewer. and then I, 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 my 25 Arcana check for the sewer. Would that carry over or do I roll again? Uh, no, uh, that's fine. As you inspect the armor, you go to touch a piece of it and it wobbles and then fades. The armor just disappears? There's an illusion. Whatever. Only two of the three items were real. So what, you want that hammer then? I'll, just... I'll take the hammer. This... I'm the only melee class. I can't even use a hammer, so. Alright, okay. let's teleport out of here. Yeah, so we don't find anything else. Okay. Can you get the stats for that? The hammer? Yeah. Uh, you gain plus one damage, or plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made with the magic weapon. Um, also, how familiar would I be with uh, Macedon? Very familiar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very. Okay. Awesome. Because that makes a difference for teleporting. Yeah. Super duper familiar. Okay. So, uh, if there's nowhere else we can see in here, then I'll cast teleport. Uh, where specifically in the city should we teleport to? Right in the king's also. castle. Okay. I don't want to take any risks. Okay. I can't attune to it because With I can't drink the other there. Things. We know we're safe. How about our rooms in the castle, or my room in the castle? All right, that seems fair. Okay. And uh, my familiarity with the destination determines whether we arrive there successfully. Uh, you can roll a d100 to and then consult the table if you wanted. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, also, don't forget, I am a, a wild magic. So I gotta roll so. a good old d100 here. So yeah, I said I am wild magic, and it's up to you when my magic does like weird shit. Who is it? Yeah, I feel like I should have told you that long. You should have, man. I'm yeah. so sorry. Just, I, just after you cast a spell. No, it's randomly determined by the DM. But oh. it, so, like, I haven't really done much spell casting, but you should know just in case. You should have just said that after we teleport. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> casting the spell. <laughs> I'm not casting the spell. Here, here, I'll double, double check. I'll double check. Um, I'm pretty sure it's after you cast. Well, that's true. Starting when you choose this original first level, your spell casting only. 
Surge of Fatigue Magic. Once per turn, the DM can have you roll a d20 immediately after you cast Surge of Spell first level or higher. If you roll a 1, roll a 1. Oh. Yes, it's just when you cast Spell. Okay, well, to make up for the fact that I've missed it, can I, I'll just do the next one with, like, disadvantage. I'll roll twice to see if I get a 1. Because I fucking forgot all about that. Woo! So. You then cast Teleport. Yep. Uh, in doing so, all of you... Uh, then get zapped out of the area as uh, a swirling vortex of uh, thin blue energy surrounds each and every one of you. Uh, and you blasted back into your chambers. Uh, specifically your chamber yep. is where everyone lands. Sweet. And you're fine. How's the wild magic work? So every time I cast a spell, afterwards I roll a d, uh, d20. Mm-hmm. I roll a 1, then I roll in the wild magic surge table, and I have to do whatever the response is. So, yeah. Then you roll d20 immediately after you cast Sorcerer's Spell first level higher, so it doesn't do anything when I do cantrips. Mm-hmm. You roll a 1, roll in the Wild Magic Surge table to create a magical effect. If that effect is a spell, it is too wild to be affected by your meta magic. And if it normally requires concentration, it doesn't require concentration in this case. The spell lasts for its full duration. So, yeah, if I roll a 1 on the d20 after casting a spell, I have to roll a d100, and one of these effects happens. And what does the DM get to decide? Uh, it just says the DM can have you roll a d20. Yeah. Well, you're fine for now. So. Okay. And, but I, I'm 14th level, so I have controlled chaos. So whenever I roll in the wild magic search table, I roll twice and use either number. Okay. But yeah, I forgot. So maybe next time I'll just roll twice. Yeah. Uh, you're in the chambers now. You hear the crashing of the artillery against the shield. Yeah. Uh, let's just start, try to find out either the king or the Asmer. All right, you guys go searching, and you go to the throne room, in which you see that the king is still there. He seems to be by the table making battle plans with um, the wizard uh, that you sent you in your quest. Along with there's a couple of his guard captains there as well. Uh, excuse me, my my liege, my lord. Uh, we have found the bracelet or bracer. You found it. Yes. First things first. I turn the Asmar. Because you told us you heard voices. I said, I thought you sealed those books away. I heard the voices from the books again. Yeah, I mean, I sealed, I sealed the books away, sure, but you still have the bond to one of them. Of course, you're going to hear the voices, but how often did you hear them? It's just once since we left. What did, the, what did it say? It's asking me, wanting me to save them or save it. Okay. And let me know if it gets any worse. Of course. All right, you have the bracelet. Yes. The bracer. Yes. And yeah. then I'll use me to enter the secret at the bracelet. Oh, perfect. Place it on the table. I do. Uh, did you find anything else while you were down there? Nothing of the Yes. Board. We found a hammer and... Dimensional shackles. Yes. All right. The dimensional shackles. Well, you can keep those. The hammer, though. Um, what is it? What hammer did you find? Hammer of thunderbolts. Yeah. All right, you can keep that. Um... There was also a suit of armor that disappeared when we touched it. Probably just an illusion from the side. Alright, very good. So, your journey is not done quite yet. I need you three to embark on one more favor for me. It's going to take me some time to take this bracer and infuse the magic of the dome with it, but when I'm doing so, that dome is going to be down. Uh, it's going to start from the bottom and seep upwards. There's going to be an opening. I don't know if you've looked out there, but his army is pretty much right outside those gates. Do we have any time? Small bit of time. The shield is not down yet. Why? What do you mean? So like short rest? Short rest, long rest. You want to rest now? I would do you like want to, to go in there under points. I'm in full power. Do you want to go in there underprepared? Alright, fine. I can see how I can hold it for maybe three more hours, four more hours. Perfect. <laughs> would that be long rest? That would be short rest. Short rest. You still get your spell slots back. Yeah. Sure How many is some? Only some? Oh, how many? Up to seven levels. Oh, then we're good. I got them all back. I barely use spells. I think I use like two. Okay, if you want to Three sorcerers get all their spells back. Oh, is that a different? Just, yeah, yes. it depends yeah. on the class. Yes. I think Warlocks is the only one that gets them all on short. Yeah. Yes. Just an hour will do. Just an hour? Okay. I can buy that for sure. Go do what you need to do the rest. Thank you. Return here when you're ready. 
And that'll give you guys a fair bit of time to do anything you'd yeah. like to do before we commence the final act. Yeah, I'm just using the short dress to gain back spell slots. How does that work? Well, for wizards, I gotta choose up to half my le- uh, wizard level of spells to gain back. But I think you just gain back after a long, long rest. It says, it doesn't say anything about short rest for me, it says, you regain all expended spell slots when you finish a long rest. Yeah, so you don't gain anything back from a short rest. Oh, that's, that's false. But I got 14 sorcerer points I can create spell slots with, with sorcerer points. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try and recreate, uh, a, I'm gonna, what is it for third level? It's five? Okay, I'm gonna spend five sorcery points to get my third level spell slot back. And then I'm gonna cut another seven, what is that? Twelve? To get five, my seven? fifth level. Actually, I don't need my, no, I want it, yeah. Okay, I'll use them all. I'll use them. So I have 12 or 14. What do you think of me getting one sixth level and then one first level? How many do you have next now? Uh, right now, all I've, all I've got is three second level and two fifth level. Just and everything, everything else. I would really like a long rest. <laughs> if that's at all possible. You have an incentive way to take a short one. Yeah. Okay, well, then we're fine. I got all my spell slots back, but I only have two sorcery points left. Something that, like, with my shield design, it's literally, like, part of my arm. Like strapped to it, you still have the orb on that. Right? Yeah, would I be able to use them all with my two hands and my shield still giving me my bonus? I would say you could, but it would pose a disadvantage on a lot because your mobility okay. would be limited. So I'd have disadvantage on, I guess. You can still do it, you just have disadvantage. Okay, well, it's a good thing I have fighting spirit, which gives me an advantage on attacks when I use it. <laughs> So effectively, you just can't. Yeah, and then I gain temporary health too when I use it. Mm-hmm. I'm good to go now. Good to go. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, as you all take your one hour to rest and recuperate, I want to check the armory for much more hand axes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you easily enough gain access to the armory, and there are axes that are strung on the walls. I'll pick like I'll pick five of them up. Do right. they have like a uh, any kind of like anybody that might be able to get my sorcery points or spells like that? <laughs> like anything at all, like potions or you can try talking to people. I'll go to the wizard's house bar. I'll be like, listen, I use some spells. <laughs> I would, I'd like my slots back, please. <laughs> um, Aegis, easily enough, you pick up five steel hand axes with wooden handles. Um, do you even know my name? <laughs> <laughs> no, you never introduced yourself. You know my name? Okay. <laughs> yeah, what, what's your name, sorry? I'm Arden. Frederick Farlight. Frederick Farlight. 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 Do you prefer being called Frederick Farlight, or can I just call you Frederick? Most people call me Farlight, to be honest. But you can call me whatever you like. Frederick it is. As long as it's my name. <laughs> is there any way I can regain energy? Like a Red Bull. <laughs> I heard it gives you more thanks. I could take that ring you have. I could expel the energy from it and siphon it into your body. Destroy it? You would destroy it, but it would give you what you need. Never mind. I actually really like this ring. <laughs> That's fine. That's good. I'll just fuck. I'll suck it up. All right. I have two. I have two sorcery points left, so it'll be fine. You yeah, didn't even use the ring. Uh, now that I know what it does, I can use it very... I, now that I use it, I can actually do a melee attack. I won't break concentration. Hell yeah, thank you. Okay. You're all ready. Yeah. You head back to the table. And so, the king speaks to you. We're all ready to go then. Seems like it, sir. Wonderful. All right. I'm heading with you to the front gates. As much as he's clearly armored up, he's got two, what seems to be two handed long swords on his back. <sighs> Should be fun. All right, follow me. We need to buy this mage as much time as we can. And he leads the charge to the gates. 
Uh, you watch as, as you walk, cards begin to form behind you guys. Uh, they grow in numbers, going from 10 to 20 to 50, then to 100, uh, then to 500. And by the time you reach the gate, there's about 1,000 guards behind you. Um, various types. Some are soldiers, some are guards, some are the king's guard. And uh, you, you all, along with the king, are lined up right at the gate entrance, and you see that the shield is down there. And across, about 60 feet outwards, you see Bane's army, which is full of like skeletons uh, in the sky. You can see dragons roaming around. Um, there are various types of demons. You see sclads uh, as well, the gorilla figures you saw previously, and a couple of bone claws that seem to be waiting to advance. Oh, oh slads. Uh, I'm super glad we did not approach the yeah. slads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can I give the Braveheart speech? <laughs> you can give the Braveheart speech. They will never take ah, freedom! But you have to speak it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Well, you can give a speech. I'll leave that for the king. <sighs> At that point, you all stand there, ready for battle. All right. How large is this, like, passageway from their army to our army? You mean the length that you are from that? Like, wide. Wide? Yeah. Well, through the gate, the gate's only about 20 feet wide. But uh, beyond that, it's infinite. Okay. So. Alright. We'll wait for the signal, and that's, you know, we'll see when the shield goes up. We'll hold them here at the gate. We're not advancing as a suicide mission. Uh, none of you perhaps have any tricks up your sleeve. I was thinking of using an arcane gate. Arcane gate? So at the moment they come here, I open a portal and then open a second one up in the air or somewhere far away or in some dangerous place so that they fall into it. It's only 10 feet wide. Behind, behind the city. Or 10 feet in diameter. Behind the city there are... Uh, there's a, there's, a, there's a massive pit we used to use way back in the day. My The, the kings before me, they would throw uh, people who committed crimes down there. Down there is said to be a very dangerous beast, or we've never seen it for ourselves. I don't know if it's still active, but the hole is still there. How far away is it? A thousand feet away. It's too far. It's too far for me. Damn. It's so bigger than 500 feet. I'm a sorcerer. All I know are tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to everyone. I wish us all the best. You are brave warriors. At which point you begin to see the shield at the bottom start wiggling and crackling. And it rises up. And the second there is enough room, you watch as Bane's army advances and way in the distance you see a gargantuan figure that matches the description of Bane uh, about 1,500 feet out. Uh, who is also advancing towards you. Is it the same, like, monstrosity guy we saw before? We're at the bookshop, yeah. It's Bane. Okay. But gargantuan size. It's a show of defiance. I will cast Create Bonfire multiple times <laughs> <laughs> to create fires all around the front of the city. Okay, you cast Bonfire, you create bonfires all across the city wall uh, on the outside of the And I stand wall. out and I raise my arms, like, outwards, and, and I look at Bane. Bring on, bitch. I'll take him on. At this point, the army is racing and hurling towards you guys. The sclads are uh, a gorilla racing towards you. The skeletons are tripping over each other, but going at full speed. Everything is coming towards you, and it just gets closer and closer and closer. But we still have our horses. Yeah, you still have your horses. No, well, no, if no. you teleport it, you don't have your yeah. horses. There is a stable, though. It's not there. <laughs> um, nah, at this pocket. point, they advance in the first wave that is to approach the gate is skeletons. What does anyone want to do? I communicate with the guards to form a shield wall. All right, as you turn around, you communicate to the guards immediately. They, <laughs> um, get closer to the gate and you put all the shields and they clang them together. And actually some of the guards stack on top of the other one's shoulders and clang them above theirs. Well trained, clearly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And now there's effective shield wall in play. The gate is uh, blocked for the time being. Anything anyone wants to do before they're about to approach? What? They're about 20 feet out uh, there. I'll Oof. use uh, conjure elemental. Okay, what do you conjure? 
Uh, it'll be. I guess uh, Earth Elemental. Earth Elemental. Earth probably the best. Good choice. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you cast that on the ground before you, um, and that takes time, correct? Yeah, it takes one minute. One minute. You start swaying your hands back and forth on the ground, and it starts shaking the rubble, and the rubble begins to rise, and start forming into the shape of an elemental. Um, while that's happening, what would you like to do there, Arden? Uh, I would like to <coughs> cast animate objects on something. Is there any? Trees or anything. there's no trees. No trees. There's buildings. Uh, there's a very tall tower further in on the city, though. It's probably too big. It's a bell tower. Um, I, I guess. guess uh, I guess can't use animate objects then. No. Oh, I could, but I mean it'd be pointless. Uh Yeah, there's various like crates and barrels and stuff. He specifically made it so there were no trees nearby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Cast major image to as an intonation method. Okay. I'm gonna reach my component pouch and I'll pull out a bit of fleece and I'll like rub it in my hands, create lots of friction, and then I'll hold it like this and I'll go like, and I'll and I want to create a cloud giant. Okay. A big so cloud giant. As you pull out your fleece, yeah. rub your hands together. Swirl, open up your palm, and let air, blow air through it. It fades out into the the, the plains, and quickly a giant is created. Uh, massive, or a, well, a huge cloud giant arises, and you watch as they're not stopping. And it does whatever I want, so... It smells, looks, feels just like it. Uh... You can't create stuff if you cause da- I can't cause damage. Let me read you. You can use actually cause image to move to any spot. So I'm gonna have it run towards them and raise a. Uh, it's uh, probably for a cloud giant to be like great sword. I'm betting. I don't know. Cloud giant. Yeah, we could say great sword. Great sword. Yeah. Great sword. Creature uses it. Act- examine the image. Can determine that it's an illusion with the successful intelligence save. Creature to discern. Blah blah blah. Basically, I'm just gonna hope that that scares them. I'm gonna have you roll a d20 for me. 13. Look at your table. Ah, fucking suck. Wait, no. It's if I roll a 1, and then I Oh, it's if you roll a 1? Oh, I did say I rolled twice, though. Yeah. 20. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. Nothing happens. Scared me, though. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine, then. Alright, you take a cut, and he goes, and he hurls his sword down, but is it. It's not actually real, though, right? No, it's big. It's big. It's just, I want it to scare it. Scare it yeah, as it hurls his sword down and swings across the battlefield, uh, it disperses immediately or does it still last? Oh, it lasts. I, I don't want to hit them. I want it to like just swing its, its thing imposing as it runs towards oh, okay. them. Trying to scare some of them off. As it charges towards them now, it's only about a 10 foot gap between the giant and the people. I can make it talk, so I'm going to have it boom out like, like, run now or face the wrath of giants. And as it does that, swinging its sword, you notice nothing happens as this army still advances and just passes through the giant. Bitch. Most of this army is undead, so they have no feeling. Fuck. Alright. And I'll tell- once my elemental is created, I'll just tell it to kill- I'll kill as many enemies as possible. Okay. Um, at this point, the army is advanced and entered, uh, begun to enter through the gate, and you hit your shield wall first and it holds it's holding uh, they're pushing back every now and again they're stabbing their spears through to kill the enemies or swords whatever they happen to be wielding uh, from your point of view all you're seeing is these men trying to hold back this force as best as they can but you also hear what seems to be heavy scratching on the walls uh, around besides the gate we all ran the walls and i'll start climbing my way to the top of the gate all right, yeah, there are ladders ready for you to climb, so as you do so, uh, guards follow behind you, and they all start forming along the wall. You look over and you see that the skeletons and other demonic creatures of bone claws and sclads are trying to climb up this wall, and they're almost piling on each other to get up. Um, at this point, you're starting to see breakage in the wall, as one man has fallen down uh, as he was effectively stabbed by a bone claw. Um, uh, but another man takes his place. Your elemental at the ready, you at the ready, the king is at the ready as well. Um, at this point, the shield is pretty much still going up. It's about halfway up before it reaches the very top. 
Um, what do you like to do there, uh, Aegis? Do we have uh, a group of archers? Yeah, uh, ha- about half the men that went up with you are archers, the other half are sort okay. of there. I'll signal for them to uh, ready the bows and then fire a volley on the next wave that's coming up. Okay. Um, and as you signal, they fire that volley and it starts knocking them down like a Jenga tower. They start collapsing, but uh, they glow, they, they climbing back up, but it's slower than you're knocking them down. Yeah. So you're making progress in doing so. You're preventing them from entering the city. Uh, the king then looks towards you. It's like, all right, look, clearly we're not going to win this battle, but we just got to buy him enough time until that bracer gets here. All right, so keep him from entering the city at any cost. Uh, at this point, a huge part of the shield wall breaks free as a sclad pushes them all the way with his fists, punching them out, and uh, raises his fist in the air, lets out a roar, slams another part of the shield wall, and puts down and makes eye contact with you. What color is this slab? Green. Rebut. <laughs> right. no, I, I told my elemental to you green can cast spells, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Which one can it can uh, turn you into a slab? Yeah. That's blue. I'm gonna have you roll. Um, Black is death slab. Well, no, it's gray. Roll an attack. Uh, yeah, an attack roll. Eleven, like my attack. For your elemental. Okay. Uh, can I see the monster man? Any old? Yeah, my character has a soldier background, so kind of just getting started right low now. Low key became the general. <laughs> Uh, that would be 19. 19. Um, okay. Uh, as you tell your elemental to hold off that slide, uh it races, uh, hurling floating above the ground uh, in its rocky formation, hurls to the sclad, and just puts all its body into it and slams all of its rocky features on the sclad, pushing it, knocking it on its back, uh, back through the gate, um, in which the shield wall begins to form up again with some more guards. And, um... At this point, the wall, uh, the creatures begin climbing up the wall again. You fire another volley, and they get knocked down. At this point, they're not even making any progress. They're just almost at the base, piling on each other. Cool. And as you look in the distance, you see there are thousands of these creatures racing towards the wall. And Bane is getting closer every second. Bane is coming? Bane is coming as well. He's walking towards this gargantuan state. At this point, the shield's got about three quarters up. And you notice that it begins to stop and crackle. Uh, and effectively, you all hear a loud boom come from behind you. And you see this massive explosion of, like, blue-white energy come from the castle, blowing a huge chunk of it outwards. It begins to tremble throughout the ground. Uh, can I tell what that was? Uh, you can't tell what it was. Uh, King looks at All right. I think something's wrong. <laughs> um... Who wants to go check that out? I'm already on my way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Matthias in tow, because I fucking know that I got out of my sight. Yeah. If you want, you can go as well and see what's going on. I think your friend and I can handle the wall. I'll sit here with the elemental to help out. All right. Great, I love going alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm, I'm running. You got Matthias. <laughs> I'm going to help the Asimar. All right, Arden, you... Go forward, are you taking Matthias with you? Yeah, I've always been a loner anyway. <laughs> you and Matthias go hurling towards the castle and then doing so I'll stick with uh, Bork and Aegis for a little bit. Um, at this point, you figure that the volleys are working and that they're not going to get up this wall. You feel the wall is secure now. Cool. What would you like to do? Uh, However, you see that the gate is getting a lot of force pushed back. <clears throat> I'll jump down. Well, I won't jump down. I'll make my way down to talk to the king, see if we can get some cavalry set up. Cavalry, um, yeah, we can do that. There's stables not far from here. And he turns around, he single, uh, tells his men to, tells a group of men to go and mount up and armor the horses. All right, well, they should be here within five-ish minutes if they follow their training. At which point, another part of the defensive uh, shield wall breaks apart, and this time it uh, is a bone claw that managed to break through. As I'll he make, has I'll two men, 
to the shield wall as well and join in. All right, as you approach it, there's the bone club that currently has two men jabbed in his uh, spikes. He just throws them in all directions and screeches at you. Pretty much as I'm running to the wall, I'll throw a hand axe at it, and then as I'm like right up to it, I'll try to stab you. All right, um, roll a d20. 16. All right, you go and you whip the hand axe at the bone claw and you successfully, it lands right on the head and it knocks the skull flying backwards from its body. Uh, you follow up with a stab. Yeah. And as you do so, you stab right through the ribs and you yank your sword out and the bones go flying all over the place. The beast crumbles to the ground. And uh, as you look quickly beyond the breach, uh, skeletons are now making their way quickly. Uh, Beside on the opposite side of the wall, their skeletons are currently trying to push their way through until more men begin to form the shield wall again. Okay. I'm just hiding my elemental to attack again. Okay. Uh, your elemental this time kind of forms its way over the shield wall, and all you hear is just banging and clanging, and you see some like skeletons go flying up in the sky, and you feel your elemental's being very effective right now. And is there like a group of slabs or some other like more beefy enemy somewhere? Like some are somewhat close by. Uh, from what you saw through the wall, there are sclads that are making their way towards it. They're more or less about twenty feet outwards, mangled within the army. Okay, but the like wall <coughs> seems to be still holding. Yeah, the wall is still holding. Okay, the volleys are working. The shield wall keeps repairing. It's sustaining so far. Okay, um, Arden, you begin to you get inside the castle and you're hearing loud booming crackling energy. Uh, in which you go to the source of it and you find that the Asimur is on the floor unconscious and the, the bracer itself is just spinning intensely and there's sparks and lightning bolts flying everywhere. Oh, fuck. Uh, I go to the Asimur. All right. Uh, what do you do? I just, like, just feel for a pulse. Uh, he's still breathing. He's alive. Okay. Can I try and wake him up? You can. Okay, I'll shake him and, like, get up. Get up. You shake him, you snap in front, and his eyes open up. Oh, oh, what did you do? Oh, the energy was a lot more than I anticipated. Oh, it blew me away, and I guess half the castle with it. You need to help me get control of this. What do you need? I need you to go to the other side. All right. Um, do you have any sort of magic that can combat lightning? Earth? That'll do. I'm going to need you to cast some... Earthly spell, um, I need you to co- dome it, contain it. Temporary suppress it. Mold Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you cast Mold Earth and uh, you take what rubble is laying around the castle and you form a complete dome over the energy. Um, as it begins to crackle, pieces of it fly out, but you more rubble comes in to replace its path. And it's contained for now. <sighs> Alright, we have a bit of breathing time. I'll be honest, I don't really know where to go from here. Something is stopping this, the, the, my shield from going higher up. I don't know what it is. Um, I can sense the source of magic, but it's coming from beyond the wall. It's Bane, no doubt. Bane's here? Yeah, he's in the front line. No, he's not in the front lines. He's in the back lines. <laughs> I don't know what any of this war shit means. All I know is that he's in the fucking field, and he's making his way over here. All right. Tell me what to do. I didn't want to do this, but you need to go find the books. I know where they are. I thought you said you wiped your memory. I didn't do it yet. For this specific you know, reason. Your bitch ass. <laughs> For this specific reason. You need to go find them. They're located in the market square. They're under the... There's a well. Um, it's in the well. Do you need them? Uh, we need them now. Is there any other option? No, not that I know of. What if I put that on? Put what on? The, the bracer. bracer. There's a low chance, there's a high chance you might explode with it, but there's a low chance it could work. <laughs> if you Let me ask you this. If you're willing to do it, it How work. badass would it be if I made that <laughs> thing my bitch? Tell you what, if you made that thing your bitch, um, I will be my give bitch you one favor. Yeah. I will give you one favor, redeemable at any time, whatever you want. I really want to put that on. <laughs> I... My whole thing is to atone for mistakes. So if I can sacrifice myself to save a city, I'm going to do that. 
We don't have time. What did I, what did I say about the books earlier? What did I say? <laughs> yeah, they might come in handy. Listen, <laughs> how much time do we have? Not much. A couple minutes, maybe. I can't get down to a fucking well back here in a couple minutes. Are you serious? I can send you down there. I can teleport you down. God, fine. Ah, we're really going to put this on. Ah. <laughs> you going to put on the bracer? Do it as like a lasted shepherd. Then. Fine. Okay, teleport me down. All right. He takes his hands, he slaps them together, and he hurls them towards you. And Emil, you are swirled in a white energy, and you are blinked instantly to the well. I drop down. Don't even hesitate. Uh, you drop down, you slide down the rope, and you land on the books. Uh, they were just in the water, floating. All right. I pick them up, and I shove them in my sack. Okay. And then I climb back up. And you climb back up rope effectively, and now you are about 30 feet away from the castle. 30 feet? 30 feet. Just wave. Like, yo, put me back up. <laughs> wow, the castle is big and tall. Uh, he's not paying attention. He's currently trying to. This he's trying to sustain, teleport me down. He's trying to sustain me? your old earth. God damn it, man. All right. You got two legs. Run. <laughs> yeah, you run. Yeah. All right. You run, run quickly. Quickly. Uh, as Son you do it, shall we flash back to Bork and Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have put that stupid brace on. Uh, at this point, uh, you hear a massive screech that trembles through the skies, and an um, ancient blue dragon comes soaring above you guys, flapping its wings, and it starts breathing its fiery breath down upon the, the buildings, uh, hitting right. some of the men. Can I cast Fireball at it? You can. So I'm just a deck uh, save. Roll, roll, yeah, okay, that's yeah, right. This is a bit level. Fifth level. Effectively, that dragon fails. Sweet. You launch a fireball. Do you have any protection spells to protect the archers? Uh, not many after this. <laughs> 10, 14. <clears throat> 42. 42. Um, okay, you, as you launch that hurling fireball bigger than you've ever made it before to somewhat match the size of uh, scaling it up. Uh, you hurl it over and you aim it just a bit ahead of the dragon as it goes for a turn around to follow up with its breath. It, you smack it dead in the face um, as it opens its mouth ready to breathe fire and it's a combustion effect. Uh, effectively a chain reacts through the whole body and the dragon explodes in the air and uh, its body parts start falling down to the ground. Fuck yeah. Right after Still you. Like <laughs> Right after you hear another screech, but coming from effectively the south side. Uh, you just hear, well, fuck. <laughs> you see nothing yet, but the wall, the shield wall that you are manning right now, and you, you know it's not going to last much longer. The force mm -hmm. is getting too great. And I'm it's going to like, cave in soon. I'm my elemental to just attack and stuff. Uh, you see that the elemental is destroying in there. It's ripping apart the army here and there. Throwing skeletons around, bashing their bones, ripping them apart. It tore a Sklad's head off. It's doing its work. Uh, how much longer for the cavalry? Hmm. At this point, uh, make sure you roll perception for me. Fifteen. Fifteen. You begin to hear the hooves of the cavalry behind you okay. as they start uh, hurling towards you. I asked the king if there's a second doorway close by. Uh, another entrance? Not close by, no. Not quite, but what if we break the wall temporarily at the time that they charge? That was my plan. Perfect. Let's do that then. Now that you and the king have this synergy going on, uh, the king uh, gestures to you that you will make the call when you need to do so. Okay. Um, I'll communicate with the rest of the wall. Okay. You watch as the horses and the mounted knights are now storming towards the gates and they're getting closer and closer and closer until effectively they're five feet away. Uh, which you give the signal and the shield wall departs. The cavalry comes charging in and uh, absolutely tramples over uh, anything that's by the gate and trying to break in, stomping over skeletons, sclads, bone claws, uh, other various demons, uh, uh, undead zombies, various things like that. And they have now engaged in the battle. Uh, you see quickly, though, that they're being overwhelmed. 
and the creatures are jumping on the horses, taking them down, killing the men. Did not last long as the shield wall reforms, but it bought you some time. Yeah. Back to Aegis. Arden. Arden. Yep. Arden. Uh, so you reach effectively the same area that um, Frederick is in. <gasps> oh, good. Why didn't you tell me to back up? <laughs> well, I'm trying to keep this thing contained. You can tell him we down, we can't tell him back up. Well, unless you want this thing to go loose. Oh, fuck's sake. All right, All right whatever. You Here's your it. books. All right, uh, keep that. Keep the, keep the earth surrounding it. Um, I mean, yeah, okay. He takes the books, he sprawls them out. And, uh, this better fucking work. All right, uh, he takes the book of pain, uh, physical pain. And he lifts it up and... All right. And he opens it up and he slams his hand on it and you begin, you, you see like his... The magic that he contains seems to be fighting with the power of the book. And as his hand seems to be igniting, uh, his blue, uh, white arcane energy is fighting to keep it from spreading. Uh, you can physically see he's struggling to keep it hold up. And he's flipping pages as he's doing this. Uh, it's not in here. It's not here. What's not here? It's not here. You got two books, don't you? There's supposed to be a spell in here that can raise a, over a thousand people if incantated right, but it's not here. It's, it's not. Shit. And he takes the book and he throws it. And he takes the other books and he throws them out the castle. Um, he says, you're going to have to wear the bracelet. God Well, oh, I'm going to have to wear the bracelet. One of us are going to have to do that. Okay. What? All right. What if I use something from the soul book? You're not here. I know, but you could get your uh, animal to bring it to me. At which point is there conversing? That's metagaming. <laughs> you hear in your head, save me, find me, I have fun. And uh, you find that you have now this link that you know where the book is. Okay. It's general location. God damn it. I just spell Mold Earth and I take the... I take the the, wrist, the bracer. I'm like, I oh. better. You put that on. You're probably going to die. Yeah, I've been ready to die for a few years now. I'm gonna give you a small, small buff, if you will. It's gonna help you sustain the power a little longer, till you can make it down there. You need to get in there. Just get in the middle of it, and you should know what to do. You should feel the bracer. Fuck. And I slide it on. <laughs> you slide it on and immediately oh, she like uh, shoots out this white energy that hits you in the chest and almost stuns you back a little bit. It hits you hard, um, but it coats your body and is the energy. <laughs> what is Matthias doing right now? <laughs> He's cowering in the corner. He's terrified. Yeah. <laughs> I look back and I'm like, you better write a book about me. <laughs> <laughs> Currently cowering and crying away. Um, and doing so, yeah, you feel the energy surge through your body. You feel like you're going to explode, but the, the the magical force combined with your magic is keeping you aligned, and you have a very limited time. Uh, the wizard, uh, Frederick, then he shoots you to the front lines where you appear next to uh, Bork and right behind Aegis. Ah! <laughs> what the fuck? fuck? Ah! I got some sparks flying from the bracer in all directions. They're like lopping onto the ground. Get the fuck out there! Oh, got some stuff to take care of. Uh, and I rush out. All right, the shield wall breaks apart to let you out. You run into the fact I want you to uh, roll. Roll. Roll a d20 first. We need luck. <laughs> 14. 14. Okay. So a bit better, yeah. Okay. Uh, you feel that the energy is beginning to kind of fry your forearm that it's on right now, and as you run in, roll 10 d10. 10 d10? 10 d10. Oh, fuck. Um, at this point, d10s. you still hear the blow. Let's roll it a few times. Three. Okay. S- uh, four. Okay, that's one. Three, I'll send two, my... Ten. I'll mental it out into the field to fight with 16. everyone else, like far enough away from okay. our side. Okay. 16. Uh, he kind of keeps in time. 10, with 16. Uh, ours there. Nine. And then, two, six, nine. I guess I'll lose concentration and run to get the book. That's seven. Okay, seven. Uh, does your elemental explode? No, uh, it just... So 
was 16, uh, 10, 5, 21, 29, 19. The spell ends 15. for you when you're depending on your actual digits listed. Uh, when the spell ends. Wait, no, wrong thing. Oh, whoops. Uh, the elemental is friendly. Uh, if your concentration is broken, the elemental doesn't disappear. Instead, you lose control of the elemental and it becomes hostile towards you and your companions and might attack. So I assume that it would just be hostile against everyone then? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. So it starts pretty much as soon as you lose control of it, it starts going psycho all over the battlefield. So but I, you sent it so far. Yeah, I sent it as far away as possible. Yeah, it's only hitting the enemies. And what did you get for your 10d10 there? 58. 58. All right. Um, roll a d20. Four. Times all that by four. 232. All right. Um, you see uh, Arden just race in, and he's taking the bracer, and you feel, you feel Arden, that you, uh, li- as you lift up that... A cloud begins to cycle in the storm cloud. A massive one cyclones around you. And as you slam it down in specific directions, lightning bolts bigger than you've ever seen before hurl down, exploding huge parts of this army. Like I'm talking like hundreds of these people are going flying, and craters are being made, fires are being set. Um, and it's just striking all locations. It's absolutely terrifying to see. And you get about eight to ten of them and you just keep going and going um we will go to Aegis right now seeing that he's causing such a wreck in the battle i'll tell the shield wall to make a push forward okay um roll strength for me strength is advantage 13 and 16 16 Effectively, as you command the shield wall to push forward with each step, they shuffle <clears throat> forward and push the enemy back, stab, very much tactical and professional maneuvers. Another step, push them back, stab, and you're making headway through the gate. And as you get through the gate, they begin to spiral out more and more soldiers come in to keep the shield wall strong and tall. Um, uh, in doing so, it seems like you guys are having success right now. Uh, as you're using it, you notice that the shield is energy, it's going way back up again. It just keeps going up and up and up. But each time it goes up, you see that there's a beam that seems to twirl and swirl uh, right down to your bracer. And it connects and you feel more energy being pumped into your body. As this happens, I'm gonna have you roll. Con. Save? Con save. Just wanted to see if there's anything that might help. <laughs> Go ahead, you look. Um, we'll go to board for now. Yep. So I'm just dousing towards the book. All right. Uh, you make it there in no time flight. You see the book is just on the ground, and it calls to you. I just made him to pick it up and run back to the front line. All right. Um, yeah, quickly enough, you make it back. And then I start flipping through as quick as possible to try and find anything that can help. All right. Uh, as you siphle through... Um, the spell book going one after the other and after the other and after the other. Uh, you finally just decide to say screw it. You flip all the way to the end and you see that there's a page that doesn't belong to the soul book. Mm. And uh, when you contact with it, you feel a burning sensation, although it's not as intense anymore. Uh, it's the same sensation you felt. I told that fucking asshole <laughs> to check the other books and say he throws it out a fucking window. Are you serious? <laughs> what an asshole. In doing so, it the spell reads... Uh, a ninth level spell, power word kill. Oh, <laughs> uh, by the way, I have the feet library access. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, Constitution um, saving throw. But you have you understand that spell now. So I would be able to cast it. You know how to cast it. It tells you all on that page how to do it. Can I use my final luck? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Good day. Ah, oh, fuck me. Plus eight. 17. 17. Uh, because the energy keeps pumping through your body. Uh, you the, the buff has worn off now, but your magic alone is sustaining you, uh, although it's putting a tremendous strain on your body. Uh, you can see that where the bracer is, your skin is beginning to like crack. 
apart and it's Listen, growing but slowly. Hey, you know, he's freaking out. He thinks he's gonna die. But a part of him's like, if I live, I hope that remains. <laughs> That'd be fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. At this point, huge chunks of the army are still being blown apart as you're commanding these lightning bolts in all directions. Um, because the energy is still pumping through your bracer. I just call out, I go, BANE! <laughs> and I like run towards him. Um, as you start slamming lightning bolts down, racing towards Bane, who's still about 500 feet out. God! Your gantuan <laughs> size. Um, you're making headway, but slowly. But you are destroying massive amounts of his army, at which point most people are dead that once you kill about 70 to 100 more enemies, Effectively, there's nothing left charging at you as uh, Arden has blown the rest away. Cool. And is continuing to do so as he charges forward. The elemental is just going psycho off in the distance. <laughs> die, plants, <laughs> die! 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 <laughs> have it, just blowing people apart. It's eternal enemy of the water elemental, so it's just fighting a river. <laughs> <laughs> at which point, the entirety of the shield has siphoned into your bracer and... Uh, as you go to raise your hand and point, the lady bolt does not strike down. However, you start to feel very, very uh, unhealthy. Uh, can I still cast magic? And very powerful. You can't. I can't cast any well, magic. No, sorry. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you say can't first? I was thinking of something else. You can. Fine. I'm gonna. I'm. Re- how far away is Bane? He's still 500 feet out. All 500 feet. You feel an immense amount of power surging through your body. Can I use a bonus action to cast Par Step? And I can use that for up to 10 minutes. And just 60 feet, 60 feet, 60 feet, 60 feet to try and reach him. Yeah, you can. I'll do it like a, like a, like a electric surge, just like a to make my way closer. Because I know I don't have much time, so. Okay, uh, as you use your uh, far step, you get close and close and close. You're just blasting through the way uh, the crowd of the army. Uh, you reach Bane, and uh, at which point his foot is about the size of you. I use far step to literally climb up his body. All right, immediately you start flashing up his body from his foot to his knee to his hips to uh, up to his chest, and finally you reach his shoulder. And... Uh, no, he he turns his head over to you and you see his fiery eyes staring to you. But they have no effect. I have to decide. What's better? Actually, you know what? I know what's better. Uh, I'm going to cast Disintegrate on him. I mean, obviously this, this fucking bracer is going to do something. But also I want to get this off. So you cast Disintegrate. It's instantaneous. On his eye. On his eyes. Yeah, instantaneous. Nice. A thin green ray springs through your pointy finger. So I just I go like this with the bracer hand. And I just point at him into his left eye, and he has to make a dexterity saving throw. He has to beat eighteen. He doesn't beat eighteen. He doesn't beat eighteen. So he's going to take ten d six plus forty four stamina. Okay. That's two, three, four. Five, and you're just six. disintegrating his eyes. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know what? I have a feat I almost forgot about that I might might come in handy for this. Warcaster. Let me make sure that doesn't do anything cool. You have advantage on constitution saving throws that you make to maintain your concentration on spell when you seek damage. You perform a somatic to come on spell when you're also creeping the corner. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because I, uh, I have a sorcerer. I have two sorcery points left. So I want to look at my oh. empower because I have the empower. I can spend one source of point to reroll a number then then up to your cruise mill modifier. Can so you twin spell that? I do I have twin? I don't think I have twin. Uh, Let me see. I have careful, quickened, and empowered. Uh, yeah, no. So I'm just gonna use empowered. So I can reroll five of these. Okay, so I'm gonna reroll this one, 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 and I'm gonna reroll this one. Okay, so Six, 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 uh, five, uh, four, three, 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 two, one. Can I use another? Uh, I'm going to spend my last sorcery point to re-roll another five of them. So okay. hold up. One, two, 
three, four, five. That would have been a 39. Okay, we'll add instead. Five, five, three, two, one. That's okay, a one. So triple six, mm -hmm. three fives, mm -hmm. triple six, a four, five, one, three, five, five. Mm -hmm. four, three, two, one. So you're adding two, one. Plus 40 is 83. So that's what he takes. Takes 83 fucking damage. Takes 83 fucking damage. 83. All right. Um. Oh. Too late. I should have used my seventh level spell slot because I could increase that by another three. It doesn't six. matter. You have to roll a d20 for me. All right. Yeah. I forgot about surge. Forget roll six. Six times that by six. Times that by six. The damage. That's. Wow. Really. Okay, yeah, 36. 83 times 6, uh, that's 480. That's 498 damage. Oh my god. If he, if, okay, here's the spell. If he's brought down to zero, he immediately disintegrates. I just got 498 damage? That's so fucking dope. What? You take your hand, and you cast out disintegration, and a green energy that is skinny and emits from your fingertips suddenly... The bracer and the energy that you have absorbed amplifies that by a hundredfold and it turns into one solid beam that strikes him straight in the eye and uh, begins to surge throughout his entire body and it keeps surging and surging and you feel the energy leaving you but as it does you feel weaker and weaker. The energy keeps surging um, and in doing so the clouds are crackling louder and thundering. Um, you see that his men seem to be screeching and screaming into the sky. Loud noises begin to happen. You watch the moon. <laughs> the moon? <laughs> begin to break apart. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Dude, I've never felt more badass. <laughs> as the energy keeps pumping through Bane, uh, you see as he... Puts his head up to the air and he starts screaming, but it's his, he's being so big, his voice is so low. And it's just this incredible roar that you being next to it hurts your ears incredibly. And you begin to see his head wisp away. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. You're on his shoulders and it begins to wisp away on his shoulders as well. I far step, so I far step down to the, the ground. And uh, I immediately rip that fucking bracer off. It might be too late, but I do it anyway, just just in case I can somehow find a way to live. As you try to pull off the bracer, you find it's melded with your arm. Well, you got a blade. Well, I the sit energy down. is still surging through you. The beam is still active. <laughs> I, I just kind of like fall down, and I'm just like look up, and I'm like, yeah, well, we knew this day was coming anyway. As you look up, you see that bane is slowly rebuilding. Are you fucking kidding me? And his face is being reconstructed. He is fighting with your energy. Uh, the beam pumps out more and more, and you see that Bane is begins to like emit red light, bright red light um, that shines bright enough out. that it's almost it's quite blinding, definitely blinding to you. You can't really see anymore. Uh, you guys, off, he's you know, coming back to life. You just see in the distance this bright green light, this bright red light that just emits so bright you can't see what's going on over there. How far away is this? From where you are, yeah. over th 600 feet away. I can't let him come back. Hold on. In doing so, you hear the roar again that trembles and actually trembles the buildings by where Borg and Aegis are at. Finally. Boom! <laughs> You, the energy absolutely explodes in all directions. You are sent flying at all nearly the speed of light. <laughs> right, you watch as your friend gets shot into the castle very quickly, and there's just what? the castle explodes in all directions. Bane isn't there anymore. You watch as his army just begins to fall down and crumble. I was about to cast erupting earth, but I'm pretty fucked. Seeing that my friend got blasted into the castle, I, I like how you said friend. We're friends now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't say that. We D6, were <laughs> these are yours, right? Yeah. These ones too. Yeah. I'll look around for the closest horse. If I don't find one, I just start running towards the castle. Do we get the sense that Bane is dead? As far as you know, he's dead. Okay. Um, the magic has stopped. His people are. His army is gone. 
dead on the ground. Uh, you jump on a horse, Aegis, and you quickly ride to the castle. What do you do? I just run to the castle. You run to the castle yeah. too. Um, Did Feymire catch me? Did Bass catch me? <laughs> As Aegis and Boric, you approach the castle, you find that it's completely caved in, and most of it is just rubble and a pile of rubble on the ground. You don't see any signs of people or life here. Is the shield up above? Shield's gone. Okay. Uh, you see smoke that seems to be emitting through the cracks up into the sky. Um, the sun begins to rise on the horizon. <sighs> what do you two want to do? I'm staring fran- frantically through the rubble. Okay. And yeah, I'm just searching for survivors. Because I'm a warforged, I, uh, my lifting weight is counted as a large instead of a medium character. Mm. So yeah, you're clearing out the rubble easy. You're just hawking big boulders all across from behind you. Um, you as well. You're moving slightly smaller yeah. rocks, but you're making headway. Um, I'll have you roll a con save for me, uh, Arden. Plus eight is 22. As you begin to clear out the rubble, and it's taking time and time. You're going faster and faster, and you're working hard, but there's so much rubble, you're not going to get there in time. Uh, you hear a... <clears throat> You turn around and there's Frederick Farlight right there, uh, with his uh, hands together, his fists together. If you don't mind, he gestures that you separate. Yeah, I'll separate. Pull back off. Yeah. He gives his knuckles a crack and he puts his hands outwards, and he makes fists instantly. And you watch as like this white energy sur- uh, covers each and every one of pieces of this rock, and he just lifts it up and shoots it out of the way. Shoots it. What what is that? Revealing a huge crater, a huge massive crater. <laughs> uh, and in the center of it is Arden, lying there, unconscious. Oh, because I was going to call it, I've had better days, <laughs> but now I'm unconscious. You see that most of his gear that has on him is absolutely torn apart, burnt, and broken. Uh, the bracers melted within his forearm. He is scorched up, he has uh, has cuts all over him, bruises. I don't think there's anything I can actually do. Like, I'll I'll just go to him. Has it been eight hours? Do you have panacea? (laughs) No. Uh, I need a long rest and then eight hours to uh, make it. You don't have any healer? No. There aren't any wizard healing spots, I don't think. The sun begins to rise and shine on your situation as the, the light shines on Arden, all of you. Would just spell magic word, do you think? Seems like way too simple of a yeah. try, I guess. <laughs> like, it's I high level. I don't think there's any magic maker in there. Can I do an arcana check? You can. See if there's any kind of magic or anything in green? You bet. In him. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> it's still a 10. <laughs> you sense no magic searching through okay. his body. He seems magicless. I'll deal to the mage. He fought violent, valiantly. He doesn't deserve to die this way. It's the time of the bracer. I'm not sure what can be done. But, you don't know he's dead yet. Uh, he watches the Frederick and kind of glides down into the crater. Dope set levitating. You see levitating. Don't move more than that one. <laughs> He hovers over Arden and he watches, he kind of bends down and hovers his hand over and you see this emitting uh, yellow energy uh, pulsing on Arden's body. And then he stops and he goes back to you. You're still alive, but barely. There's one thing we can do, but you're not going to like it. What is it? Make me a war for it. <laughs> 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 Most of the body is decaying. I know a dwarf man who lives under the city. He is very crafty. He could, so to speak, rebuild your friend. Make him more like your companion over here. <laughs> Although probably not fully like that, but bits and pieces yes. for sure. Enough to keep him surviving. Is that something you want to do? What's the, what do you say, just? 
think so. He'd hate it, but he deserves it. <laughs> I agree. This is where Martha shows up and he's like, I'm the power of the wizard all alone. <laughs> he is. <laughs> if he was hiding in the castle when you hit it. If Matthias is dead, I'm pissed. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, you watch as Frederick takes his hands and he claps him into the sky and uses thunderclap as a loud boom soars around the area. And, um, Dope, was that levitate? <laughs> <laughs> you see a dwarf man that comes running down the path where you guys came from. He's just hucking it, giving it <laughs> everything he's got. He's like, <sighs> Someone call for me. Someone call for me, yes. Yes, we did. Uh, we need your help. Oh. Need... You owe yes, him? him. And you want me to do the thing? Yes, if you could. And then in a while, he might die, but okay. <laughs> um, and he kind of slides down the crater, uh, gets right beside you. He's, whew, slaps his hands together, and then a hammer forms. Um, No, please, no, no, not the one. You know, I actually don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to go ahead and do this. And he slams it right on your chest cavity. And in doing so, you watch as magic just kind of disperses around your body in a greenish form. And as it trans, or as it travels through your body, your your arms, uh, your skeletal system becomes metal and robotic. Uh, your Internal area is fine. It's still working properly. Uh, whatever magic he used healed some of that to a bit. And afterwards, when it's all done, you your head is made of metal now. Your arms are made of metal. So your legs, uh, your skeletal structure is metal. Pretty much, it's just your torso area is still human. Your face is metal. Your face is metal. Well, half of it's metal. I still got it. <laughs> it worked. All right. He just throws the hammer back. And... Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. Safe to hero here. Oh, I love saving heroes. All right. Um, I'll go away now. And he watches the ground kind of disperses below him. He sinks into the earth. Fuck the that door. <laughs> <Yeah>. You wake <laughs> up. I wake up? You wake up. Just standing imposingly and on top of him. <laughs> I look around. And I, I look down at my arm. The one with the bracer. Is it still there? It's still there. I try to take it off. It's part of your arm now. And I look around at the rest of me, and I'm metal now? It's metal. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's not like janky metal, it's like skin almost. It goes with your movements. I start to stand up, and I'm like, I, I, I look around, and I see this crater. And I see That's them up, up top. You see them up top, just staring down at you. I, like move my hands around my body and then I like slowly start to climb up <laughs> and I, I, I grab uh, the Asmar of Frederick by, by the scruff of his neck and I say, what did you do to me? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to me? Oh, no, I saved you. I saved you. You're alive. You're breathing. I kind of knock the, the half side of your head that's metal and be like, <laughs> matches that thick skull of yours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I... You save the city. Uh, and also, you feel no magical abilities right now. You feel the arcane ability has left you. I hate this city. <laughs> <laughs> I said, da, the moment da, we got da, there, cool. we should have left. <laughs> and now I've ruined my magical abilities and I've turned myself into a half metal human. You saved thousands. Well, you... you killed Bane. As far as we know, it's a lot to take in. You, you won the battle. If you hadn't done that, we wouldn't be here. I still don't think I'm a hero. I don't think I'm a hero. You are? I was never meant to be a hero. You're more a hero than anyone has ever been. You're saying I can never cast magic again? Most likely not. I can try and train you and see if we can find any arcane ability that may be hiding within yourself, but... Not sure how well that will turn out. Fuck, man, that's heavy. <laughs> Should have just let me die. <laughs> I say that. 
Uh, and then you hear behind you, I can still be arranged <laughs> as the king starts approaching. He's chuckling a little bit. Boss, I'm just kidding. He won't kill you. I just kind of like slump down. And I, I don't let anyone see, but I do start to cry. <laughs> Although, maybe you should check on your friend Matthias. And as he says that, the king's eyes glow red and they just pulse. And he looks at all of you. And each time he looks at you, they pulse. And he gives a smirk and he cackles. And then he disappears and wisps away. Want to cast power? (laughs) (laughs) Yes! (laughs) Oh, he does, he wisps away. Oh, fuck. Uh, As he says that, I look up. I go, where's the dice? That's the song he was in the chambers, but all the rubble came down. I, I, I get up and I start running, and I'm looking for him. All right, you run and you go towards the rubble. Um, and you're stumbling over it. You, uh, you don't see anything. Uh, you start moving the pieces around. Now, the rubble over here is quite light, so it doesn't take much to reach the ground, and uh, it doesn't seem like you see him. Frederick then comes over and he uses levitate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, dope! Is that levitate? <laughs> oh, nice. And he moves all the rubble away, uh, effectively revealing nothing. And as you quickly turn around, scour and search, and trying to look for him, you hear, How do you feel? Turn around, and there's Matthias. Standing there, his skin is just gleaming. It is glistening white. Uh, and he looks pristine, very clean. I felt a lot better. I'm never going to cast magic again. I'm half metal. All for a city I don't care about. You no one told me being a hero would be like this. No, but it comes at a heavy price. You executed that price. How do you think you did? Well, I cast around 800 damage <laughs> throughout that whole battle. I killed a god. Cast lightning. Well, you can never kill a god, but you banished him for a very long time. I feel sad. And you will for a while, but it'll go away eventually. Follow me, we must meet up with your companions. I have something to show you. Why are you glowing? I'll explain that in a moment. God, more gods. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He leads you to your companions until you eventually see uh, Matthias as well. He's glowing. And how do you two feel? Accomplished. It's a good word for it. Your journey's not over yet. What is next? You can't kill a god, but you can banish him. However, you can kill his son. Who's the son? A Goliath warmonger. You killed one before, but this one's a little different. He wears gold-plated armor. He's last seen far out on the reaches of the kingdoms. Heading this way, in fact. Your friend here, Arden, now magicless, but he possesses something you do not know about. The Fae. Oh, fucking a Fae. <laughs> <laughs> like, you see Arden, like, <laughs> pinches nose. He's like, curse ever since I opened that fucking scroll. <laughs> you can receive your magic back, but you have to fight your fear. In doing so, you can become who you once were. What do you think my fear is? Let's put it this way. A large plant-like beast Are you fucking creeps kidding? into your dreams. No, I'm not the fucking fame of a crocodile. No, I'm not the fame of a crocodile. I'm not the fame of a crocodile. <laughs> that is where you journey next. The Feywild? The Feywild. I left that behind for a reason. You must go back if you want your abilities back. It's either that or you... S- Succumb to a life of normality. Fed up for a human. I don't think I'm really human anymore. However, you have a new ability. That, as he points to the bracer. Is it due? It's a bracelet of a god. Bane. When he was younger. So, does that make me like a demigod? Or something? What, what does it you do? You could call yourself that. What does it do? What can I do? 
You'll find that when the time comes, but I'm telling you right now that that will save your life, and that is the key to defeating your fear. Because if my fear is a Baymar Crackle, that's only a challenge rating level 11, and I just killed a god, so that would be super <laughs> underwhelming. But yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't say that, but the key, without my magic, I'm nothing. Sure, but that's why you have the bracer. That bracer controls the power of the moon. Nope. Oh. Can I get my magic back and keep the bracer? Most likely you could. In turn, you'd probably make yourself equal to a god. But that's only if you succeed. Like I said, it's not an easy task, but it is your path. Where must I go? To the far lands of the Feywild. I'll send you there when the time is right. For now, you need to rest, recuperate, think, study, meditate, grow wisdom. And the two of you, Borg. Yes. You've done a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Those books you carry. The books of pain. Yes. Do you have them? I have one with me. But I but I have the others. You do were together, I assume. But it's up to you. Yeah. Give me that book. Hold up. Once again I just voice of reason. What are you? I'm Matthias. Yeah. Don't fuck with me. Yeah. I've had a really long day. I'm not messing with you in the slightest. I've been watching you all this entire time. What are you? That I'm not going to tell you. I use hand my metal arm to punch a wall. <laughs> tell you what, hand me the book and I'll show you. I'll show you what time. I'll show you what time. I'll hand him the book. I grab the soul book and watch as he glides. Will I be able to keep that power word? No, it's with the book. It was a, a page from a different book in this book. Yeah, you can slip the page out. Okay, I'm gonna do that. As you do that, you watch as he glides his hand across the book, emitting this vibrant white energy. And in doing so, the book goes from this decayed black cover to this pristine hard white cover. And then there's a yellow jewel in the center of it, in the front cover. <sighs> Here. This is for you. Thanks. With this book, what is it? It's your book. It's empty. You can harness your energy with it. Take your spells, write them in the book. Learn how to use them better, and you can amplify them to godly amounts. You become the most powerful wizard around. Protector of the realm. Oh, that's what I need to be. Where do you need to be? Just helper for the world. And what better way to help the world than to protect it from any danger? It's a great honor, Bork. At least you're not half metal and magical. <laughs> you can still roam the world, travel as you wish, but have that know that you will be ready when the time is right. Sure, I'll accept. Very good. Aegis. Hi. You are an honorable fighter. The stories you've been through, things you've encountered. It's taken a toll. Hard times indeed. I'm sorry to say, but that part of your life isn't over. I don't think he'd be really happy if it was over. <sighs> that part we... of my life is all that I know. I knew it would never end. And therefore, I have a task for you that weighs heavily on your shoulders. I task you from keeping Bane from entering any plane of existence. The fuck is he supposed to do that? No, this I... cube. I was created to be the perfect defense. As he pulls out a cube and plane your shift. Press aside and travel to a different plane. Simple as that. He can't fight a god. Oh, he can. Go back to your home. Go to the temple in the ruins you once protected. Inside is a key item. An item that will help you defend against Bane from ever leaving his plane again. Is that something you'd be able to do? I accept. Wonderful. You've all proven yourself worthy. Now, who are you? Or what are you? Might be a better question. I saved your life. Twice. You did save my life many times. You owe me that. Oh, I'm very grateful about it. Are you a god? 
Not exactly. More as the word of Mother Nature. I'm the owner of this realm. I was born as this realm. I simply just made myself in the form you would understand and be able to comprehend. The ground you step on is me. The air you breathe is I. The resources you use to build your structures is from my own. So he was I probably the plans. reason why we can like bring down the forest. Possibly. Yeah. I am Matthias. The world. Don't get cocky. <laughs> <laughs> you still almost died to a fucking vine. <laughs> yes, but was that vine intentional? Or not? <laughs> I fucking hate this town. <laughs> Send me to the Feywild. <laughs> I have some fears to face. Very well. I shall do that. He begins to ah, stretch his body. You sure you're ready? I can not go alone, right? You want to say goodbye? <sighs> All right. I guess this is it, fellas. I guess so. Maybe we'll meet again sometime. I certainly hope not. Hanging out with you guys is probably <laughs> not so good for me. Uh, guys almost walked into a fucking god in the middle of a city. Kept a book you weren't supposed to keep. Let me into a fucking cave. <laughs> I loved every minute of it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going back to the Fae, because without my magic, what's the point? It's been a pleasure. These were good times. We'll meet again, no doubt. Especially if he's got that stupid cube. <laughs> He places his hand out before you and this wisping, windy energy uh, begins to slowly cover and coat your whole body and swirl around in such directions until eventually you begin to see your friend fade away. I do grab <coughs> Faymar by his tail so he doesn't scamper <laughs> off. And he goes with you as well until <laughs> finally you disappear. Right before you disappear. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right before you disappear, you see Bane behind Matthias. And he takes his hammer, or his maul, and swings it across his head right as you disappear. And smirks, you both immediately see this, but you are still in this plight of existence. I cast power word. Yes! Yes, you fucking got him! Mm-hmm. And as you see that, Bane has no eyes, and he is blinded, you cast power word kill. And before he goes to strike down upon both of you, he explodes into bits. His body parts ravaged everywhere. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, now you feel me. <coughs> you see that Matthias kind of lies on the ground. He gets back up and he flies his hand across his wound, healing it immediately. Well, I'm glad I gave you that spell. I was supposed to say that. something sassy, but I'm in a <laughs> yeah. different plane of existence now. You really didn't think that page got in there by accident. I don't know about anything anymore. No, you used it wisely. Well, Bane is dead. I feared that might happen. Your mission to protect him not exactly the same. So I have a different one for you. <laughs> As the DM, I will now change your fate. <laughs> the weapons you have are that you'll find in the ruins. Yeah. More powerful than you know, very much of the god killing kind. With that, I want to grant you an even bigger position. Keep the rest of the gods from entering this plane. With your cube, you can travel to any plane you wish, and they are all on one. And you never know when Arden might need your help, because it's not like you can do magic anymore. <laughs> so. Eventually, if you use it correctly, you can probably find a combination to the Feywild. It's after you use it, of course, for a little bit. I must go now, but I bid you all adieu. Thank you. You can go on your journeys. Thank Thank you for these great boons. Don't thank me. I thank you. With you, this world would be destroyed. I would not be here. And every bit of life would be gone. Goodbye. Goodbye. We'll meet again sometime. That That we will as the rest of his body fades away. What's the power word? Kill a one time thing. Definitely. One time thing. <laughs> As you used, cast it, the page burnt up. Like you said, though, used it wisely. The sun rises even higher. 
and you Not see a me. second sun <laughs> rise on the horizon. But this one, slightly more orange. I'm in eternal twilight now. <laughs> Yay, mister. You have <laughs> the Feywild while we are back in your horrible land, and you search for the beast. I remember this place quite well. You, um, Bork... <laughs> you go out. roaming the lands again helping rebuild, <laughs> doing your good deeds helping in what ways you can and Aegis you have the cube which you used to travel to another plane back to your yeah. home world and you go to the ruins what does he find? what does he find? what does he find? what does he find? DM, DM, what does he find? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? God killing him? DM, tell me please you find a shield it's so fitting that your name is Aegis. I'm sorry. Like, this yeah. is great. Now your eternal purpose is to defend the world from gods. You get a shield for a weapon. <laughs> this is perfect. This is amazing. You acquire a shield that is uh, translucent yet vibing on a blue energy. Um, as you pick it up, its energy surges through your body and the shield goes to just a uh, solid blue color, although still magical energy. As the energy surges through your body, immensely you feel incredibly powerful. Your eyes turn bright blue. Um, uh, your your warforged tone uh, begins to tarnish a little bit. Uh, and as it does tarnish, you see skin. And skin begins to rupture through your body, and you, be, you begin transforming into a tiefling. Okay. <laughs> and the only part of your old body that you keep is your left leg. And the shin is still robotic. Fucking kidding me. So I turn into a warforged, he turns into a tiefling? <laughs> I wonder if in the prayer he turned up into a human. Yeah. You walk out of the ruins and you take your shield and you raise it in the air and immediately this blast of energy surges through the land. And uh, everything regrows. Anything that's destroyed. The temple, the ruins, they begin to rebuild. You're now on your path to becoming a god. So am I. As well are you, and as well are you. Sweet. And that is the conclusion. Holy shit. Tyranny on the horizon. That was fantastic. That was amazing. Oh my god. Great ending. Yeah. That wasn't too bad.